Being a professional climber doesn't mean that you only get to climb. Let's say you are forced to do some other jobs, some other stuff. When I was 10 years old and I got my first sponsorship, it was really tough for me to do. I was incredibly shy, unable to speak in the front of the people. A few years ago, it was real mental torture. At least most of the times when I need to stand in the front of the people and speak, I'm not that nervous. Adam, when did you start to practice? I don't remember when I started to practice because my parents were also practicers and they took me to the fallacies when I couldn't walk. At the moment, it's definitely even easy to enjoy some of this stuff. It's just a nice distraction that you don't only think about climbing and training 24-7. So we have just opened the gym and now we are going to the Montura store. Some duties can be interesting, even fulfilling, and I think you grow a lot as a person. The problem is when the work duties don't really let you climb and train as you would like to. I've already learned quite well to organize my time and try to anticipate what will be too tiring and what will be all right. Fans are specific category. I mean, when you see that after making a selfie or giving a signature, somebody is so keen and so happy, it obviously makes me pretty happy as well. But sometimes I would really like to ask my fans to respect my privacy. So for example, if I'm sitting in my van and having a dinner, I will not give you a signature if you bang on my door. For me, it's really important not to be just a monkey that shows how to climb and that's it. I like being a climber and also a person who has his own opinion and who is able to share the passion and be contagious with the passion with the others. In that perspective, it's just nice to make interviews with the journalists to make slideshows, to meet people and the events. I feel very lucky to be able to do the thing that I enjoy doing the most and being paid for that. This is just amazing. At the same time, my climbing itself doesn't really bring back anything to the community. So in a way, I feel responsible that if there is an option to do something, to create some content that could inspire, make some people happy, or at least entertain, it's worth doing that. Sponsors are obviously a very important part of being a professional climber. Until very recently, I was almost not supported by the government at all. And the price money, even on the World Cups, are definitely not something that is worth relying on for living. Driving now across the Dolomites to reach Trento for the Trento Film Festival, where I'll be speaking at a panel discussion. Buonasera, signore e signori, benvenuti. Vi, vi porgo il benvenuto a nome della Trento Film Festival. I'm used to being on the stage while I'm climbing, but when I'm on the stage on like panel discussion, it's really easy to speak about climbing, even though it's in the front of a lot of people, because that's what I'm passionate about, and that's why it feels quite easy. When I'm speaking and I can feel the vibes that the people are interested, it's satisfying, and I like the connection. So now we are walking over to a theater and there will be the first screening of a new film, which I have to attend. Sometimes there is just way too much, way too much of everything. Not only filming, events, interviews, but also way too many fans. And 
sometimes being alone or with only those that I want to be with is priceless. I might be alone even much more than most people would think. When it's about attending events or even some training or even some climbing, I'm driving alone pretty often. And sometimes being alone with yourself could be pretty healthy in terms of my mental state. You have a lot of time to think and consider. <laughs>